Thank you. Got your attention. Good evening. Welcome to the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, meeting for the City of Cape Girardeau, Wednesday, July 8th, 2020. Um, before we get started, I'd like to read a quick note. Public hearings on rezoning and special use permit requests recommended for approval by the Planning and Zoning Commission tonight will be held at the City Council meeting on Monday, August 3rd, 2020. Rezoning and special use permit requests recommended for denial tonight will, re will be referred to the City Council at its meeting on Monday, July 20th, 2020. Subdivision plats recommended for approval or denial by the Planning and Zoning Commission tonight will not be pre will be presented to the City Council at its meeting on Monday, July 20, 2020, unless there are outstanding staff review comments. Development code exception requests are decided by the Planning and Zoning Commission. They do not go on to the City Council. Seeing that, do we have anyone uh, to approve the minutes? A motion to approve. So, so moved. Yeah, well, look at that. Second. Uh, <laughs> motion by Mr. Greaser, uh, seconded by Mr. Spooler. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 There we go. Aye. That motion passes. Um, is there anyone here to speak on anything uh, not on the agenda for tonight? Uh, seeing none, let's move on to item number one, the presentation, public hearing, and adaptation of the Cape Vision 2020 concept, comprehensive plan. Is there someone here to speak on that, on uh, behalf of that? Yeah, I'll give a brief introduction. This is uh, my call to the Task Associates, who's the lead of the project team uh, from Illinois. And uh, we hired TESCA to originally do an update to our current comprehensive plan, which was adopted in, in early 2008. Uh, comprehensive plans, they look at all aspects of the city, everything ranging from transportation, infrastructure, housing, community services. So it's a very broad-based plan, and it's supposed to have a 20-year horizon. So the plan we adopted in 2008, you know, covers a 20-year time frame, but the plan recommended that it be evaluated and updated at the 10-year mark. So around 2017 is when we started gearing up to do uh, what we thought would be an update to that plan. We went through an RFQ process and ended up hiring Tesca uh, with Orion uh, Planning and Design as the sub-consultant. And so, uh, as we got into the process, uh, it, it turned out that it probably would have been better to do a full-blown comprehensive plan. That's what Tesco suggested to us, and, and we said, sure. And he probably regrets that now, but uh, I, I really think it, it was the right decision. And uh, I think we've got a very good product, uh, something that's going to serve us well for many years. And so we're excited to have Mike here and have him uh, give you a presentation about the contents of the plan and the process that was used to arrive at it. And uh, hopefully we're so close to getting it adopted so actually implement the plan. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mike. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate it. I'm going to come over to the mouse here because we have some slides that I want to kind of talk through with you. Uh, but we are delighted to be here tonight. Uh, excited to uh, hopefully get the plan approved here in the new future, uh, near future. Uh, comprehensive plan for anyone that's not been familiar with it. I'm sure you guys are, but maybe somebody in the audience or somebody at home. It's really kind of a long-term kind of policy document that we do look out 20 years or 30 years in advance. Uh, it really is a tool that we use for a lot of different things. So we use it in reviewing zoning cases and development regulations to, to make sure that uh, what is being proposed is consistent with the plan or if it's not consistent, there's a really good reason why it's not consistent. Maybe there's been time lapse or something like that. We use it in capital improvement programming to, to plan new extensions of, of water and infrastructure and, and roads and those kind of things. We use it as an economic development tool to look at where we want to see development happening in the community. We use it as a, as a tool to, to plan and regulate community services. Uh, this plan addresses parks, addresses education, and addresses quite a number of community services, including municipal services. Uh, and we also want to actually ensure that we have a good quality of life in the community. You do, but we want to continue that going forward. And so the plan talks about those items. Uh, Ryan really already covered everything on this slide, so I'm just going to skip over that one. Uh, the plan has nine chapters in it, uh, going from an overview and background to implementation. And I'm going to kind of walk you through each of those. Uh, the, the overview and background is, is simply that. It talks about the place where, where Cape Girardeau is loca located. It talks about the history of the community. And it also has a vision statement in there. I know the print's too small to read, but essentially, I love the quote at the bottom that we actually have for resident. Cape Girardeau, 
has a Midwest work ethic combined with Southern hospitality. And I think that's really true from my experience in the community. Uh, it, you guys are a really strong regional center for this whole Southeast Missouri area and uh, really have done well throughout economic dips and turns. You guys have, have weathered those very well. We wanted to make sure that this community, this plan was built from, from the community, uh, so we really made an effort to, to reach out to the community. We had a couple of different workshops, an early visioning workshop, a later Cape to the Future workshop where we looked at different land use scenarios. We had uh, online website tools. We did a series of polls through those that were pretty effective. Uh, we went out to Spaghetti Day to meet with people in person and locations. We did interviews. We really try to use a lot of different uh, media to, to connect with people. I think Love is actually awesome on Facebook and, and posting things and adding links to, 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 to documents that we were preparing on the website so we could really get good input from the community. And we were really happy about that. That's just some of the pictures of <coughs> events and activities that we had during the process. A big part of this also was an educational component. We wanted to explain to people why we do these kind of things, why we're looking out 20 years in advance. So we did that as a part of the process and I think it was pretty effective. Um, one of the key elements of the plan was looking at economic prosperity. Uh, I think in general Cape Girardeau is pretty pr prosperous in terms of a community, uh, but we want to make sure you continue to be. So we talked to a lot of people, did some, some, some research, looked at workforce, occupational diversity, looked at income and wages, attracting and retaining young professionals. That was something we heard loud and clear from a lot of people in the community that was an important issue, so we talked about that in the plan. Uh, we looked at entrepreneurship and building that. Uh, strong, strong, growing communities have strong entrepreneurs that can grow businesses, and, and I think Cape Girardeau is one of those places that is doing that pretty well. Uh, uh, the Codify is a wonderful example of an incubator space that does some really cool stuff. We've got other examples in the community, I'm sure. Uh, some of the statistics are a little bit outdated here, like for example, this one's talking about strong, strong employment growth, which you do have. Uh, this also says that the unemployment rate is three point something percent, which is higher now. However, uh, it is still less than national averages and, and even regional averages. You're still doing well, uh, just that the number has gone up a little bit. And then it also talks about the employment base of the community. Obviously very heavy and strong in health, which is a, a great sector to be strong in. Uh, but actually fairly diversified. The other one that is pretty large is retail, uh, which is obviously important to your sales tax base. Um, and so uh, we developed a series of action steps to look at economic development in, in terms of uh, what needs to be done going forward. Uh, I'm not going to read all these to you that are in the plan, uh, but one I wanted to point out to you real quick was Enhanced West Park Mall. We just got a comment on the, on the website after we posted the plan talking about that and how we need to look at that area and kind of think about reinventing it. The plan actually talks about that area talks about trying to diversify the land use in that area, uh, the way trends in retail and everything are now these days. Thinking about it as entirely retail probably is outdated at this point. We need to think about diversifying that and mixing it a little bit to keep the retail that's there and surviving strong uh, and uh, diversify the area economically and still maintain strong property values. Now, the other one I wanted to point out that's related to that is diversified municipal revenue stream. When we looked at it a few years ago, uh, over half the city's revenue source was from retail sales tax. It's wonderful that you have that, but are you going to be able to maintain that all in, in the future as strong as it is now? That's somewhat debatable. So we looked at trying to diversify uh, the base to, to make that work long term for the community. We looked at social and cultural vibrancy. Uh, really, Cape Girardeau is a very vibrant community in terms of these areas. We've got great parks. Uh, great events when you can do them. <laughs> uh, uh, wonderful, um, you know, uh, healthcare systems in the community. Lots of arts and entertainment options in the community. So you've got great resources here. Uh, we just want to keep keep those, enhance them, and make sure that they stay strong. Historic preservation certainly is something you've done quite a bit of, and, and should be proud of some of those efforts. Uh, so these are some of the action items talking about that. Uh, one I'll point out to you on this list. Uh, where a lot of people talk about the idea of expanding outdoor dining opportunities, which has really become in vogue in the last uh, few months here, I think. Um, but uh, historic preservation, and then uh, I think it would be behoove the community to think about a uh, long-term parks and recreation master plan, too, to focus on that a little bit more uh, and really where you want to go uh, in the future. You've got some great park facilities, but I think taking an overall look, we identified in this plan some particular areas in the community that had gaps if you will, between walking distances to parks, although you might want to think about a few smaller additional parks. I think your larger parks are in pretty good shape, actually. Uh, look at the quality of the housing mix in the community in terms of 
affordability, some of your neighborhoods, uh, the housing market that is existing here in Cape. Um, interestingly enough, we did a quick poll to ask people what their top priority was, and the number one answer we got was revitalization of older neighborhoods. We've been doing it, we need to keep doing it, obviously, uh, and that's a really important element. If you look at the, it's a little hard to see at that size, uh, but the age of the housing stock, uh, you can see a big bump right in the middle, and that, that age of housing that built in the 70s and, and some in the 80s uh, is, is time for pretty significant rehab on roofs and all those kind of things at this point. So um, that is an important element to, to continue to enhance. So I skipped over the, the key housing um, action items that you have there. Um, you know, in, in strengthening and enforcing code violations, we heard uh, from a number of people being an important element. Uh, and then just uh, looking at, uh, you know, in general, I would say housing from my outsider's perspective is reasonably affordable in Cape Girardeau, but we certainly want to make sure that we've got good housing for all income levels in the community. And so I'm making sure that we, we keep up with that and make sure that our codes uh, are allowing for new housing options or some of the things that came out of the, the research on housing. Uh, we then look at sustainable infrastructure. That's really all the utilities, technology, municipal facilities, uh, all of those kind of elements that are necessary to support a community. Um, lots of maps in this section of, of your existing systems. No major things here, but you know when you've got uh, a community that has got some age to it, you've also got uh, utilities that have got some age to them. And so you have to have uh, maintenance schedules and those kind of things to keep those up and to maintain them. And so continuing those efforts, uh, things like continuing <laughs> LED lighting programs and upgrades, uh, continuing to focus on things like fiber optic infrastructure and making sure that your technology is up to speed are all elements that were highlighted um, in the infrastructure plan. Um, transportation and mobility certainly is important. Uh, I just heard Brian talk a minute ago about the, some upcoming uh, updates for the regional plan. Certainly that regional, we fit into that regional plan and that's very important. Uh, and the actual regency, regional agency has done some great planning in terms of looking at all forms of transportation, whether it's cars, uh, bikes, pedestrians, all those kind of things. And those are all important. Uh, the graphic that you see, even, even at this size, you can tell generally uh, that that is basically showing that most people drive, no surprise, uh, in Cape Girardeau. Uh, it's kind of necessary given your topography and how spread out you are. Uh, but we still want to make and be cognizant of those other forms of transportation in the plan. Uh, it certainly talks to that. It talks about the idea of complete streets and thinking about roadway corridors, not just for the cars, but for bikes and pedestrians and bicyclists as well. Uh, those are all important elements. Uh, in the planning process. And so here's some of the, the suggestion action steps in that area. Um, a couple I'll highlight there, continue to support emerging technologies. That just, get, you know, there's lots of signalization and all kinds of really cool things that are going on there to help the flow of traffic and make things move efficiently without requiring building additional lanes of road and those kind of things. So sometimes those technology improvements can really save you a lot of money. So that's one that I'll point out uh, and then continue to to repair existing public sidewalks was one we heard from a number of people uh, when we were working in the community. A big element of the comprehensive plan is land use. Um, it, it is kind of outlining where we are today and where we would like to go in the future. And there's different ways <coughs> to go with this. This helps a community understand where future residential areas are going to be, where industrial areas are going to be, where we want to focus commercial development, where we want to look at mixed use opportunities. Uh, and so to do that, we did an exercise where we looked at three kind of broad scenarios. We looked at kind of the conventional growth pattern where we continue to grow uh, exponentially west, essentially, uh, and which is what CAPE has kind of historically done. Uh, then we looked at an approach that was kind of we call retrofit and redevelopment, where we keep most of the development, focus more on infill, generally speaking, uh, to the east of the interstate, uh, and then um, you know, allow some development outside of that, we're not saying exclusively, but, but primarily focusing on redevelopment uh, in areas that are, there might be older need to rehab or repurposed buildings, and then infilling sites internally. And then we have a, a option that we call uh, uh, kind of strategic connections, where it's kind of a hybrid of those two different concepts. Uh, we actually had a community workshop, talked about this with the steering committee that we worked through the planning process with, and the clear consensus was that the preference would be for option B focusing on uh, redevelopment, infill development, uh, and not spreading out so fast. Uh, that makes a lot of sense from an infrastructure standpoint, not extending a lot of additional roads, a lot of additional utilities, 
uh, and it preserves the character of the community that, that you guys love and has built over time. So that's kind of the overall theme that we went with when we were developing the overall land use pattern. I know that's way too small to see, although there is a nice printed map version that is much easier to read uh, on, the, on the wall over there. Uh, but this is it, and it generally uh, shows kind of uh, growth internal to the community, some additional growth on the, on the far west side, but most of it keeping it concentrated uh, where it exists, uh, allowing, and there really is a fair amount of developable land still in that area, so uh, you know, to, to, to accommodate any reasonable growth we would see uh, from now to 2040, we think that's plenty of area. This plan, I think, probably does show more agricultural less than the previous plan does, actually, to kind of reemphasize that. Let's keep it in close. Um, but um, the overall land use patterns are pretty consistent with the way the community has developed over the years. Um, and in addition to that, in land use, we, we developed some series of focused areas. We're really a little bit closer west of 55, uh, Kings Highway Corridor, the West Park Mall area, a couple of your older neighborhoods in the downtown area were the areas we focused on. This particular graphic is looking at the area to the west, and, uh, and generally a lot of the periphery is shown as agriculture or fairly low density uh, residential development. Some pretty consistent with what has been developed out in that area uh, in the past. Uh, I'm going, there we go. All right, Kings Highway Corridor. Uh, predominantly commercial right now. Uh, the plan talks about thinking about that area again, like I just talked about a minute ago about the, the mall area. Is, is in the future thinking about introducing some additional development types, maybe more mixed use development, maybe some more office, maybe some more uh, residential in those areas. Um, when some of those larger big box retailers go vacant, they're not likely to be filled with a lot of new additional big box space, honestly. Uh, so looking at ways to reuse some of those sites, mixing them, that'll help the, the existing retail survive better. We'll diversify your property tax base and uh, really has been successful in a lot of places that we've seen across the country. So long term, uh, that's a vision that we were suggesting you consider here. That may require some modifications to your zoning regulations. And in fact, one of the suggestions here was maybe even taking a, a little bit deeper dive into looking at this kind of midtown area and, and planning for it. And another suggestion that we threw out in this particular area was looking at ways to enhance it from a, a pedestrian safety standpoint. I've seen, literally seen people out there trying to scramble across that street and it's not really a good thing. Um, so looking at ways to make it a little bit safer from a pedestrian perspective and looking at opportunities to, to add some green infrastructure. We looked at, you know, maybe we've seen communities take uh, essentially concrete ditches like you've got there right now and more naturalize those and that can be a nice way to, uh, one, reduce the speed of the flow of water, to allow some of that to infiltrate and uh, really enhance the water quality in those areas. A long-term improvement, but occasionally the federal government in particular will come out from grants for kind of those kind of things. And so highlighting that in this plan will give you a leg up if, if something opportunity leg does like come up in the future for those kind of things. Um, so then we looked at a couple of neighborhoods. We looked at Red Star, we looked at, at South Cape. Uh, downtown, we didn't really spend a lot of time on it because you've gotten a whole separate downtown plan. We did want to recognize that and kind of integrate that into the plan as well. So those are kind of the focused areas we looked at. Uh, in terms of land use here, you can see the, the recommendations. I've kind of covered most of those <clears throat> already. So uh, that's the 20 minute version of a really long, lengthy plan. Uh, I was trying to keep it short for you. I'd probably talk faster than you wanted. But anyway, that's the highlights. But I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you guys or anybody else has. Thank you very much. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Gentlemen? I, I have a question, but it's just because I think I might be at the wrong meeting. Uh, so who are, what are, who are you guys? We're the Planning and Zoning Commission. How do you get on you guys? Are you guys voted in? Uh, appointed, ma'am. You're appointed by whom? Uh, city Council. Oh, okay. Okay. And then you are... I'm a consultant that's been hired by the city to help develop this one. Oh, okay. So I participated. I was like one of the 70 people, I guess, that um, answered questions like back in 2017. And so uh, I'm just learning a lot. Sure. So thanks for clarifying all of that. Yeah. 
And maybe I'll come to a different meeting not about planning and zoning, because I do have some concerns, but I don't think they're specifically for planning and zoning. The only thing that I would just want the committee to really think about is like when we're talking about infrastructure, it's just if we can somehow stop referring to Cape Gerardo and two different entities as like Cape and then South Cape and then figure out how we can get some commercial real estate more so that really provides opportunity for access to people who live in the southern part of our community. I live in Ward 4. Um, I have every single thing that I need. Um, I think that when you looked at the walkers and the bikers, and then you look at the access that I have, and I have a car, and you maybe correlate that to people in our community that don't have a car, and you look at the access that they have, and you think really specific about putting access where it's needed. Um, my ward has <coughs> impacts. We don't really need them to get to work because we drive to work. And if you were to look at the cost of homes, it would correlate to owning multiple cars and all of that. So I would just ask the Planning and Zoning Committee, perhaps doesn't put the first ticket where there's no need, but we maybe flip the paradigm and start and put the best where it's most needed, not putting what's most needed with what's left. So that's just what I have to say. And I'm really interested to see how you guys got on this board. So I might Great. be back. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Great points. The only thing I'll supplement that with is when we looked at the South Cape area, particularly, and I don't know Cape, but, but that particular neighborhood uh, does need some more walkable commercial options and that kind of stuff, which we did highlight at the point. So. Yeah, I, I looked at that. Um, that's really interesting. It's just that, like, if you look at Northern Cape, there's a lot of yellow, low right. dense areas, very safe to walk, right. very safe to bike. I can get anywhere very safely. Um, not because of dangerous people, but because of wider roads, right. more sidewalks. And so when you're looking at historical preservation, you're gonna, just like if anyone's ever been to Yellowstone, like you can't really drive a big RV there because the roads are built like in the 40s. They're not wide enough, I don't know if you guys have been. But you look at that, we really need to put some true dedication to places so that people can have accessibility to all things that everyone in our city is afforded. So, um, I would just ask the committee to consider that. I might uh, suggest that if you have an interest in more development and opportunities and changes in the southern area of the city of Cape, you might look into the porch initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, I happen to sit on that board as well. Uh, and um, they are formulating um, ideas, plans, and strategies to help uh, elevate uh, what goes on in the southern areas of the city of Cape. Yeah, I'm very familiar with that. I'm an educator at Jefferson Elementary. Perfect. Um, I wish that Porch was mentioned in this. You bring up Porch. Um, I was under the impression in 2017 that this was a 2020 plan, which Brian mentioned that it rolled out to the 2040. And so as an educator, I'm looking in the eyes of a five-year-old, and this is going to be developed through their life. What are they going to walk into as an adult? What opportunities can, how can they access our community and stay here? Um, so, yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Anyone else have any other questions or comments? I've got a comment. Uh, my name is Jeff Bauer. I had a chance to look, download the report, and I read it cover to cover. Clearly, a huge amount of work has gone into it. Um, my, I guess the first comment is a bit of an observation. Um, in, in my mind, whenever I think about the process, you start with the wish list that's everything you would possibly want to do if you could afford to do everything you wanted. And the process is to impose discipline and choices on that to distill it down to a prioritized list of the stuff that you're going to do given a limited amount of resources. And frankly, as I read this report, it still seems to me to be in wish list form. 
um, the range of things that we say as a community we want to have done in the next 20 years is everything. Um, and I, that's not practical. We can't afford it. Nobody can afford that. So, and, and you know, I know you guys are voting to accept this, but you know, to me, the value of a strategic report like this is to truly be sort of a north star to help everybody understand what decisions to make on how they choose where to do developments, what kind of housing projects, all the different things that are mentioned in here. And frankly, it's not helpful when the solution is we want it all. And and I would follow up on the comment around the um, the theme about even something like um, the areas in the, the, the infill, I forgot that it was the three maps that you had, and kind of the strategy to maybe try to focus on that what looked like to me the uh, North Kings Highway Corridor was kind of a main central theme through that area. And you know, when I look at that and I think we just passed a TTF and over the last decade we've spent tens of millions of dollars to open up Center Junction, which the juries I think are doing a great job on. We've got a whole other intersection further north than that that's got virtually no development on it, but all the infrastructure in place. Um, We've already made the decision and invested a lot of money to keep growing. And now we're looking at our plans for the next 20 years are to try to redevelop and infill more. And my question is, well, why did we do the other stuff then if this is what we're going to commit to do for the next 20 years? It seems like we just went and built a lot of stuff that's going to sit vacant if our priority is infilling. I know that doesn't mean you'll never do anything. They don't make sure that something gets built out there. But the, the point is, to me, the value of these has to be some coherence from one plan to the next. And it seems to me that you know when they're everything, they lack the focus and the guidance that people are looking for to know how they should be doing things. And the result is we go down this path, and then over here, and then here, and here. And that, to me, isn't as helpful for a strategic and I have participated. I did respond to the the, uh, the online uh, questionnaires. Um, and I appreciate the work being done. It's just my input on the process at this point. So I can tell you normally what most communities do is they start with this because you do have to identify what the what the big ideas and pictures are, and then there's usually a follow up strategic planning session. I will call it with the city council where they say, okay, here's everything. I obviously cannot tackle all this stuff, right? So let's prioritize it. We did do some minor prioritization in here, but we really didn't take it to the next level, which I agree uh, needs to happen. Um, so that, that would be a suggestion or recommendation, I guess, that the city council would actually do take the recommendations in here, whittle them down to the ones they want to focus on, and probably not thinking 20 years, thinking the next five years, unless this is to focus on the ones we can actually accomplish, given the realities of money and funding and that kind of stuff, and make it happen. Uh, the other thing I would say is that you know, when we're areas that we've already invested in infrastructure in, those are included in the infill and retrofit stuff. So rather than what I was really trying to emphasize was let's not continue to push a lot farther west. Let's keep it where we've, we've already built and put the infrastructure in place and fill that in first before we worry about going elsewhere. I think we've got enough of that in place to support growth in the next at least 15 years. And frankly, I don't disagree that, I mean, we've got a, a lot of empty buildings probably more on the west side of town, large big box buildings than we've had vacant in my lifetime that I remember here. So I think it's the right approach. I'm kind of illustrating, I think, when we're not being strategic about narrowing them, we, you know, we end up with a bunch of stuff we probably shouldn't have done because we should be making sure we're here or we have to grow as a community. Right. You know, the one thing that was in, you had, I think, your list of your goals where you had five of them and the number one thing was economic development. And that solves a little bit of the building issue. If you have more economic development, more jobs, and a higher population, but I think the population growth that was or as it is, the chart shows that it's only going to grow by maybe 5,000 people over the next 20 years. Um, that's still not enough people to take care of all the buildings we have yeah. today. So I think you know if, if I were picking what the highest priority is. We've already committed ourselves to needing to get bigger than we are just to occupy the stuff we've already started and built. And I think that needs to be our goal, is how do we get bigger to grow into sort of the shoes that we've already chosen.
Good points. Thank you very much. Um, it's a lot to take in. Um, but I, I would suspect you have, you have contingencies, contingencies in place for making things work within the confines of what infrastructure we have in place currently. I think that's just to reiterate what you had said. Um, any other questions? Yes, sir. My name is Dan Drew, President of the American Hotels. I think there's a lot of good things, and Jeff, I think you hit on a lot of great items. <clears throat> I, I think one thing that I did not hear, maybe I just missed it, and that is who are we going to get to fill the jobs that we already have available? You know, we've got a, a new veterans clinic coming. We got a new uh, mental hospital coming. We can't. We got hospitals that can't staff already. Um, the the what I would call the, the hospitals and the university. Um, they take quite a bit of the people that are available. And uh, I mean, it's 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 just all different things. I'm talking about mom and pop places. I'm talking about restaurants. I'm talking about convenience stores. We're all fighting for the same thing. And unless you plan on using robots for everything, we need to start looking at some different things. And I, years ago, learned that I don't know the key to success, but the key to failure is trying to be everything to everybody. And that's what we're trying to be. And uh, someday you're just going to have to stop and say, whoa. And to be quite honest with you, and I don't know if you agree or disagree, that is a good thing, but our world has changed. It's changed forever. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of businesses going broke. And if you don't think this is coming back with a vengeance, I think we're all wrong. So. You always do what you always did. You always get what you always got. And that's what my dad said. Certainly. There are people who make things happen. There are people who watch things happen. And there are people who wonder what the hell just did. So, you yes. know, uh, I just urge everybody to look at it from a big picture. Understood. And Ed, you and I can go back 30, 40 years and talk about all the different things. And, and we have. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, 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 it's different. Employees don't want to show up for work. They go to the party and things like that. And, uh, and they're paid more to sit at home than they are to come to work. So. Understood. Thank you. One real quick response to that. Um, I completely agree on the workforce issue. We've heard that uh, clear. In fact, a little bit in here from the company, it's clear. One resource I would point you to is uh, the Greater Confusion Time Development Council of the some really good programs. They've got very similar issues, honestly, uh, where they're not, they're struggling to attract employers and they've had really low employment rates and uh, very similar issues to what he was discussing. They, they've developed the quality of life programs and some of the things that they, they've used to market and work with businesses to recruit people to the community, working with their college, their colleges, but you've got college here too, a university that's stronger than theirs actually. Uh, and so uh, doing those things, I think, would be one good place to start looking. Yes. I just have a question. Kind of piggybacking on what Dan said too, you know, thinking about the future, 20 years is a very long time, right? But I mean construction and things like that take a long time. I'm not I'm not saying that, but you know, with the you know feedback that you receive from surveys and events and things like that, do you believe that that is still because the last survey was 2018, right? So that's two years ago. Do you think that the feedback and the comments are even going to be relevant moving forward because this we're changing so rapidly? And I mean, I'm speaking of an education component. We were we were turned upside down. I mean, it's heartbreaking, you know. And then talking to our families and people who have lost jobs and business owners and things like that, you know. And I get that that's all out of our control. What happens, you know, down the line? But I just would hate to you know, invest so much time, money, and energy for the next 20 years, um, when I'll be old, probably one foot in the grave, but- Be careful. 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, does it reflect that um, flexibility to kind of shift and change with the times that we're in, which obviously were unexpected when the, the data was collected, and I'm aware of that. And then, does it truly represent our community to escape Gerardo? I don't know. Yeah, well, I'm not sure that I can answer that question. Just you're right. The world has changed in the last three or four months, dramatically, dramatically. That's really the task of the city council and, and what we've been talking about is yeah. trying to figure out you know, all these big, big ideas that we got in the document. That really was the intention. It was to the So the, the purpose was not to be strategic. Yeah, we, we do need to be strategic, of course. But this is really supposed to be the parent document that births a lot of other documents, plans, and initiatives that are more tailored <clears> that really ensure that things are done that they are doable and they're doable within a reasonable time frame and within a reasonable cost. Um, and, I, and I think it really does start with the city council. They have to look at where we're at right now, and it's hard to forecast. We don't know how long this pandemic is going to continue to explore, so what it's going to look like. Um, hopefully, five years from now, we'll have it under control, but we don't really know. But that's really, I think, the challenge of the council is to, to figure out where do we start with this. You know, we've got this big document, and we do need to figure out what's really most important right now, what really is the most relevant, and what do we need to be focusing on first to really kind of develop that prior to the priority that you talked about. So, like, based on what you said, and that you kind of just piggybacking off of everyone, and like everything I've learned today, I'm kind of like, it's mind blowing, but um, the people that were on this committee to create this, like, I collected surveys for other things for the city. Like, we're basing it on the voices of 70-ish people? Like, okay. No, we, we had several different ways of getting input from the public. Oh, the okay. plan even talks about how many survey responses we got, how many comments we got on the project website. Okay, uh, the folks that attended the workshop, certainly their, their input is certainly important, but they were just one part of a much larger uh, well, I public initiative. Well, I wanted to pieces, it said 70. So it would just be, Really, again, moving forward with this, I think my opinion is just what you know, everyone is saying is how can we get a lot of different ideas because we can't become the next Silicon Valley. Like, they only have empty buildings. Like, <laughs> and so how do we not be that? Um, and so that's interesting. Just the, on the point of input, uh, on the picture, too, we're talking about the input just from the website, and we had 2,500 ideas shared on the website, uh, 1,200 new visitors, so some people have to submit more than one idea. Um, we did those good polls, and we had a lot of people respond to those. Uh, the turnout, they're absolutely right, the workshops were huge, but it was good input that we got from the people for that, so. Anyone else have any other questions or comments? I've got a comment. Uh, I'm Salvador Mondragon. I'm a used to be a fisheries biologist for the conservation department. As of last week, I'm a community conservation team leader. The uh, Missouri Department of Conservation is actually going into a, trying a different direction with a new director, and it's going to be more community based. So I think it's a good opportunity to try to engage us when it comes to grants. To like you were talking about the concrete structure and all we actually did a project like that and it was very successful. We've done several projects in St. Louis, Kansas City, some of the big metropolitan areas <coughs> within the state. So uh, I've got tons of ideas that I would like to implement here in Cape and in, in the region. Uh, I'll actually send you an email this morning too. I don't know if you got it, but I think it's time for us to kind of sit down and talk about some of those things and maybe come up with some things that we can do here in Cape you know, that would benefit to the community. When it comes to parks, uh, implement more. I actually work with the CTC also to try to propagate native uh, landscape uh, plants and try to put them in some parks. We're working with Fairville right now to put some of those in, in their park system. So it would be a good opportunity for us to actually work there and take and do some of this stuff too. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Ryan, do you have anything? Okay. Um, Seeing as such, and I, and, and I do appreciate everybody's questions and comments, and I, I understand that the intent is to, to have a plan in place that does give us some agility to adopt, adapt to the changing times. Um, and seeing as such, I, I suspect that's, that's what you've outlined, that we, you know, this is, 
I'm just reiterating what Ryan said, this is the big wish list. Uh, each step, as you know, as we move forward, um, we'll have input and um, approval from the city council. Um, so seeing that, um, council, anyone? Commission, any communications? Has any questions? Well, I'll I just, I just want to, I just want to reiterate and underscore that, that this is a vision, not a strategic plan. Uh, any organization that would try to strategic plan 20 years into the future is, is quite frankly wasting their time because none of us knows what we don't know, right? And so just keep that in mind. It is, it is a broader, grander wish list. Some of the items may never be complete, uh, but it's still an important process to go through in order to get down to those strategic plan documents so that you can then work on the things that, that quite frankly, we can afford to do and need to do and those sorts of things. So I just want to, I want to underscore that point that, that it's not a strategic plan. It's, it's more of a vision for the next 20 years that will burst from it, as Ryan said, uh, strategic, a number of strategic plans, quite frankly. So just wanted to state that. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, and seeing those comments and questions as they've been answered and uh, spoken to, do we have a motion? So moved. All right. Second. Thank you very much, gentlemen. So Mr. Jackson and Mr. Spooler. Um, kill. Motion to approve. As, is it a uh, roll call vote? Okay, gotcha. So, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Looks like the ayes have it on that. Thank you very much. On to item number two, the public hearing on the request of Thomas and Tori <coughs> Shoemaker to rezone property located at 1017 and 1019 Harmony Street from R3 High Density Single Family Residential District to CBD Central Business District. Do we have anyone here to speak on the... Please approach and uh, give Carol your name and address. Tom Schumacher. Ten, or my home address is 174 West Orley, Jackson, Missouri. The property in question is 1017 Harmony, Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Uh, I'm, do you, do you? I'm basically applying for uh, rezoning of the, the corner to us from a single family to a CBD, multi-zone. My plan is to take my the building that I have and it was a duplex with a commercial in between and make it three apartments. And that's why I need to rezone. Excellent. Thank you. Yep. Uh, anyone else here to speak on behalf? Anyone here to speak against? All right, thank you. Um, according to what we have here in front of me, based on the above findings, the staff recommends approval of the rezoning requests. Um, Commission, do you have any questions? All right. Seeing none, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. That was too fast for me. And it's got it. And second. <laughs> I'll be quick. Mr. Blake. Yep. Yes. 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 That passes. All right, item three, request of Mid-America Highway K LLC to zone property located at 4072 State Highway K as C2 Highway Commercial District upon annexation. Um, do we have anyone here to speak in a favor? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. <clears throat> Gentlemen, Dan Drury, President of Mid America Hotels Corporation. I'm here to ask any, answer any questions you may have. Anybody have any questions? This is the old Drury Company, uh, Drury Construction, Drury Company building. Outright, outright K there. Outright yeah, K. Yeah. We're mm -hmm. going to move our corporate headquarters there. Sounds like a good plan. As far as I can see, and based on the above findings, the uh, staff recommends approval as well. So, 
No questions? No questions. Excellent. Thank, Thank you, sir. Um, anyone here to speak on behalf as well? And is anyone here to speak against? Seeing none, I'd like you uh, open up, gentlemen, and please remote. Motion to the word. Thank you very much, sir. Second. Mr. Welch and Mr. Jackson. Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Welch? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> that passes. Item number four. Public hearing on request of Sven Svensson and Bonnie Coy Svensson for an exception of, from the development code section 25-604A, fan site at 1506 Price Drive. Good day. How are you? Fine, thank you. So Sven Svensson, my wife Bonnie Svensson, we live at 1506 Price Drive. Yes. We put in the request. I think the documents submitted are face value. We're here to answer any questions. Uh, Mr. Svensson, uh, I know that, that you probably don't find it as, as amusing as I did when I looked through your documents, but uh, I especially appreciate the ear tracks through, through the <laughs> Well, uh, I wrote all the t I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, we're, uh, you all have all the paperwork. Um, it, it's, it's problematic. It is. And, and um, so because we are both horticulturalists and he being the professor of horticulture at SEMO, um, we're trying to grow things that maybe the average person doesn't grow. And, it's still tasty to deer. Yes. So thank you. Uh, anyone here to speak uh, on behalf as well? Um, so according to what I have in front of me, basically about findings, the staff recommends okay, approval for the exception request. Um, Just call me. Seeing that, yeah. do we have a motion? I so Second. Reaser and Mr. Spooler. Yes. 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 On subdivision plats. Thank you very much. Motion passes. The Highlands and Hopper Crossing Phase Three record plat. Um, we have anyone here to speak on behalf of that? So none. This does look pretty straightforward. Correct. Anyone from the commission have any problems with this? Move approval based on uh, that conversation. Motion by Mr. Glenn. Second. Second by Mr. Jackson. Okay. Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Wells? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mr. Freezer? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Excellent. Motion passes. Um, Number six, agenda item number six, Evans Castle Rock Subdivision Record Plat. Anyone want to speak on behalf of that? Yes. Two twenty-five Castle Rock. Yes, ma'am. Um, bought the lot next to us. We only had five feet on one side. You couldn't even walk around our house, so you want to combine it one lot. So it stays that way. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, wonderful. Um, uh, as it says here, based on the above findings, staff recommends approval of the record plat subject to staff's comments being successfully addressed. Uh, we have an amendment. We do? There's an amendment. Yeah. I'm sorry. They've uh, taken care of the comments. Oh, there oh, we right. are then. Um, my apologies. So based on that, do we have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. And second? Second. Gotcha. So, Mr. Welch and Mr. Dowdy. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 And item number seven, Bacon First Subdivision Record Plat. That one, do we have any here to speak on behalf? 
Once again, this seems pretty straightforward. Based on the above finding, staff recommends approval for record plat subject to staff's comments being successfully addressed. Uh, we have a Further on the list. Thank you. Yep. Seeing such, do we have a motion? Uh, we approve as submitted. Second. Mr. Glenn and Mr. Spooler. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Excellent. Thank you. On to communi commission communication. Gentlemen, anything uh, we have to go to the order? Seeing none. Ryan? Thank you very much. Um, I guess we could obtain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Mr. Glenn, second? Second. Mr. Jackson, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.